SpaceX and the US military are ready to fight in space. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. So good, so good, that smokiness of the lap song. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day, a spacey day. We're gonna be talking about the US military as well as SpaceX and a lot of the countries that are in the space race, let's say, that are developing anti-satellite type of technologies. We wanna get into that a little bit today because I think it's very important. When I spoke about this in a piece that I did that was talking about the Chinese military creating a space plane that would go up into LEO or low earth orbit and literally snatch a satellite, bring it in, do whatever they wanted to, and just let it go again. The hell is that? But they can do it, and it's been proven. They've done it about three or four times, I think I reported on, which is crazy to me, but this is what we're seeing. Anyways, I want to get into this a little bit with you because I think it's very, very interesting, number one, but also important because it shows the space race that's going on and how it's being escalated as of right now. And we see Elon Musk and SpaceX literally on the forefront. We don't hear about the military type of defensive nature that SpaceX can wield through Starlink or other satellites, but I think it's there, and I think they've been working on it for quite some time. Before we get into this, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, why the hell not? They're free. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. They are 100% free. Go grab them. Also, if you enjoy this video, even the least, throw it a thumbs up. That would be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. If you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down here. You can click on that. Give a dollar or two if you'd like. If not, that's okay too. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. Also, if you want more Starlink content, I put together a Starlink playlist or a Starlink podcast. Click this right here. There's over 150 videos just on Starlink. What to buy, what not to buy, what to do, what not to do, what to set up, how to set it up, all this kind of stuff. But the most important thing is the why behind it all. This channel is all about the why, not just the how, the why. Also, I'm still doing the 3000 push-up challenge. Today, I believe, or tomorrow is the last day. So if you guys want to contribute, there's a little donate button right here. All of the funding for that goes directly to St. Jude's, the Children's Research Hospital, which helps kids with cancer and their families. So that button is still there. Check it out, click it, give a dollar, whatever you can. We would also appreciate that. Lastly, if you're looking for a VPN or you need faster internet service or like me, more reliable internet service, check out Speedify. The nice folks over there gave us a promo code, which is Christina. If you use that promo code, you'll get 20% off right in your checkout. Just put it in there and you'll get that off. If you don't think you can remember that promo code, just simply click the link down below. It will take you directly there and it will give you the 20% automatically just by clicking that link. I'll stick that in the description as well as the pinned comment. Anyways, guys, I was reading an article and I think that this is really, really interesting about where we're going with this space race and what is going on and who are the major players and what are they doing? What are their capabilities and what are the downfalls of these capabilities that they... So I'm going to read through this article and then I'm going to give you my commentary on it. And as always, most importantly, I want to know your thoughts about what is going on here in LEO or low Earth orbit. So this article starts out, the US is ready for conflict in outer space. According to a senior military official, after developing anti-satellite technologies to counter the threats posed by countries such as Russia and China. Brigadier General Jesse Morehouse at the US Space Command, the arm of the military responsible for space operations, said Russian aggression and Chinese vision to become the dominant space power by mid-century had left the U.S. no choice but to prepare for orbital skirmishes. Quote, 
The United States of America is ready to fight tonight in space if we have to, Morehouse told reporters in a briefing at the U.S. Embassy in London. Quote, if someone was to threaten the United States of America or any of our interests, including those of our allies and partners with whom we have treaties or mutual defense support, we are ready to fight. Satellites underpin great swaths of modern life, from banking systems to weather forecasting and critical for military operations through intelligence gathering, communications, navigation, and guidance. But an over-reliance on satellites means that an attack on a country's orbital assets could have far-reaching consequences. Four countries, namely China, the US, India, and Russia, have tested anti-satellite capabilities by destroying their own satellites with missiles from the ground. But such demonstrations, which the U.S. unilaterally banned last year, create vast clouds of debris that put other satellites at risk for decades. Makes sense. You blow up a satellite in orbit and you got a ton of pieces that are going to sit up there and rotate in orbit for many, many decades to come before they finally deorbit and burn up in our atmosphere. It's a problem. When Russia shot down one of their own satellites in 2021, the explosion showered its orbit with more than 1,500 trackable fragments. Quote, when you create that debris cloud and it lingers in orbit for decades, it's almost like detonating a nuclear weapon in your own backyard, Morehouse said. You paid the price too. Makes sense. Faced with a new space race, Morehouse said on Thursday, the U.S. would continue to develop anti-satellite technology, not because we want to fight tonight, but because that's the best way to deter conflict from happening, adding it would do so, quote, without engaging in irresponsible testing. Russia and China are working on spacecrafts capable of anti-satellite operations. In 2020, the U.S. accused Russia of launching a projectile from one of two satellites trailing a U.S. space satellite. Meanwhile, China has launched a satellite with robotic arms capable of grabbing other satellites and has developed a way to place explosives in the thruster nozzles of adversary satellites. The explosives are designed to go undetected for long periods of time and when detonated resemble an innocent engine malfunction. Tricky. Beyond weapons that grab, crash into, or shoot down their targets are other approaches that jam satellite broadcasts or damage the hardware with lasers, chemical sprays, or high-powered microwaves. Quote, we have a variety of capabilities that we can bring to bear and we'll continue to develop capabilities that allow us to maintain a credible deterrent posture, Moore said. Quote, can you develop a capability that can be used to counter satellites that works well and validate that it works without creating debris clouds on orbit every time you do so? He states, absolutely. Since its invasion of the Ukraine, Russia has threatened to target Western commercial satellites it considers to be involved in the war. I wonder which ones these are. Shortly after the invasion began, Elon Musk agreed to supply Starlink Constellation satellites to the Ukraine, which rapidly became critical to the country's military. But in February, Starlink said it would prevent the satellites from being used to control Ukrainian drones, saying it never intended the technology to be used for offensive purposes. Morehouse said one of the lessons from the conflict was how resilient SpaceX Starlink's proven to be. The communications network comprises thousands of small satellites in low Earth orbit, which are easily replaced and updated to counter the threat they face. Quote, it makes no sense for Russia to even try to shoot one down because there are thousands of them and they don't have thousands of anti-satellite missiles, he said. Makes absolute clear sense there to me. So as we can see, there are countries already developing anti-satellite type of military offensive and defensive actions, right? We see that it's China, Russia, the US, and India doing so. We have seen Russia already blow up satellites in low Earth orbit, which has created debris clouds that are massive, 1,500, I think they stated, which is a ton. And then you've seen China, which I reported on about four or five videos ago, that literally 
literally take their Chinese or China space plane and pull up next to a satellite and then grab it with its arms, bring it in, do whatever they want with it, and then throw it back onto orbit. Are you kidding me? It's just amazing to me. Remember, this is a plane that goes up into LEO or low Earth orbit. This isn't a plane that flies at 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers, no. This is a plane that will reach up to 550 kilometers off Earth, pull up next to a satellite, and then grab it. <laughs> or, which I didn't even know about until I read this article, insert a small explosive into the thruster nozzle and then detonate it at will down the road sometime. Not even right away. That is crazy, making it look like it just had some type of thruster malfunction and that's it. Very innocent. I mean, these are the little tricky things that we see happening. And then, of course, we have microwaves, we have lasers, we have all kinds of jamming capabilities. But like this Brigadier General said, with SpaceX Starlink, they were just surprised on how resilient it is. And being that it has thousands and thousands and thousands, right around 4,500 as of right now, satellites in orbit, and we're looking at probably tens of thousands in the not so distant future, it's going to be next to impossible to be able to get all of them, right? So these countries are going to have to come up with a different type of countermeasure when it comes to SpaceX Starlink. How are they going to do it? I really don't know. What we see with China using these little small explosives that they insert into the thruster nozzle of the satellite and then blow it up down the road sometime. That's just amazing. So I think there's going to be a lot of this going on. And I think a lot of it is going to be surveillance. These satellites, number one, are going to have to be able to move around a lot, to be able to move away from debris, and also be able to have a good, strong defensive measures built on. That doesn't mean like Star Wars type of lasers that blow up other satellites and all of this stuff, but countermeasures that will stop, for example, a plane pulling up to it and inserting a small explosive or just simply grabbing it, sucking it in, right? And then doing whatever they want with it and then putting it back into LEO. I mean, that's just wild to me, but this is the type of things that we see. So anyways, I want to know your thoughts with all of this. Do you think that it's fascinating? What do you think about these type of technologies? We know that China says that they want about 13,000 in orbit in not the too distant future. They are ramping up their satellite manufacturing tenfold. They've created a brand new structure that is the largest satellite manufacturing structure, I believe, on Earth. They're going to start pumping out tenfold the amount of satellites that they were in the past. So we're going to to see a lot of satellite launches coming soon from China to get them up to the same level as SpaceX Starlink. And I do believe they're going to do it. This isn't something that they're just saying they're doing. They are actually doing it, as we can see these massive satellite plants that are being created. So anyways, once again, I want to know your thoughts down below. Let's have this conversation. Where do you think this is going? Are we going to see a battle, or as the Brigadier General calls it, a skirmish in the night sky? Are we going to see countries competing for orbit, for certain locations in orbit, certain heights, distances, where they are located? Is this going to be a thing? And if it is, what does this look like in five to 10 years? I want to know your thoughts. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're not already, click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you in another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.